Thank you for joining me on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm Shana Park, your host for Money Talks. July is National Bereaved Parents Awareness Month, a month dedicated to a parent's journey through bereavement after the loss of a child. Today, I will be interviewing my mom, Shonda Park, where she will explain her journey after losing my sister, Azalea. Hi, mom. Welcome to the show. Hi, Shana. Thank you for having me back again. Always great to be having you on the show. <laughs> um, so in the slides that we have, um, my sister Azalea, um, and I would love for you to share more about her story and explain your journey. Sure, uh, we can bring up the first slide. It's hasn't gotten easier um, speaking about what happened. Uh, but Azalea is my oldest daughter, and she was on her way to the first Christmas light show at the Stadium Mall, December 18, 2020. And as she was walking in the crosswalk, she was struck by a drunk driver um, who actually fled the scene after hitting her. And she was pronounced brain dead three days later. She was um, only 21 years old with her whole life ahead of her. She was beautiful, um, joyful, giving, just a wonderful, wonderful human being. And we all miss her so very much. Yes, yes, we do. And, you know, with everything that had happened with Azalea, um, you know, I would love for you to share your journey and um, how life has been after her passing. Well, through this, tra tra through this tragedy, and in honor of Azalea, Safe Ride Hawaii was born. Uh, Safe Ride Hawaii is a nonprofit organization with a mission to save lives by pro providing services that take intoxicated drivers and their cars home safely in honor of um, Azalea's legacy of living a life of love, joy, and contribution. And Safe Ride Hawaii aims to live in a world where driving under the influence is non-existent yes and you know um i know this uh safe ride hawaii as well as it is a nonprofit, right um yeah. started this in honor of azalea and i feel that this nonprofit is a way to help change the world and help change the way um you know how hawaii is but um you know, can you share some DUI statistics with us? Yes, of course. Uh, let's see. Well, ever since this happened, you know, I've been working very closely with MAD, Mothers Against Drunk Drivers, and Teresa Paulette has been very supportive. She basically runs um, this island for this program. And I got some statistics just off of their website. So it is still the number one cause of death on our roadways. Um, drunk driving is still the number one cause of death. And every day, 926 people are injured, or every 90 seconds, someone is injured in a drunk driving crash. Uh, when you talk about deaths, every day, 32 people are killed in drunk driving crashes, or every 45 minutes, someone is killed. Wow, those are some pretty high statistics. And I know for Hawaii alone, um, you know, we get a little bit better, but it's not like we've made a huge dip in the DUI statistics. So, you know, moving forward, like generally, how much does it cost after you get a DUI? Uh, it's a lot. And when you think about the amount of people that it affects, um, another statistic on the MAD website says that two out of three people will be impacted by drunk driving in their lifetime. So 
when we talk about the the person, um, I guess the the offender, the person who is driving under the influence, the first offense, they can have seventy two hours of community service, um, forty eight hours to five days in jail, and pay two hundred fifty dollars to one thousand in fines. So that's for the first offense. That that's quite a bit of money, and when you don't when you're not just talking about the money, but you're talking about hours spent um, doing community service and hours spent in jail away from work. That's all time and money that it's costing a person. And that's just the first offense. So say you have repeat offenders. Now for the second offense, it's three, uh, two to three year license revocation. Um, one to three thousand dollars in fines, and either five um, to thirty days in jail, and then up to two hundred forty hours of community service. So it's a lot. Yeah, that does sound like a lot. And of course, um, you know, drinking and driving when you go out, you want to drink responsibly and not be in a position where you're going to be in a financial dip because of one split second. You know, anything could happen in one moment. So I think that's why you've created Safe Ride Hawaii, right? To drink responsibly. Yeah, and I do feel that if if there were stricter laws from the beginning, then it would really minimize repeat offenders. So with the third, um, if there's a third offense, it's five years in prison or um, five years of probation, which includes a three to five year license revocation, um, 2,000 to 5,000 in fines, and at least 10 days in jail, and then having to complete substance abuse counseling and a driver's education program. Uh, so again, when you, know, you think about all this money that a person ends up having to pay by, driving under the influence, um, Safe Ride Hawaii, like I said earlier, we provide services that take intoxicated drivers and their cars home safely. And our charge is only $2 a minute. So when you look at um, the main area, which is Honolulu, a lot of people, um, they are at establishments, maybe on average, just about 20 minutes away from their home. So you're looking at a $40 cost to get home safely. And we are not in competition with Uber, Lyft, the cab. We encourage people to plan ahead, um, you know, plan your ride ahead, not, not even drive if you know that you're going to be drinking. However, there are still people that will drive or maybe they're not expecting the, maybe they're expecting to be a des designated driver and somehow they end up becoming intoxicated themselves. So for this, there's basically no excuses. It eliminates all the excuses, right? Because this is 100% preventable. So uh, our service would then take that person and their car home safely. There's a chase driver behind that will pick up the driver that drove the intoxicated person and their car home safely. Yes, and <clears throat> thank you for sharing um, everything that you just did because it does make sense. And of course, we wanna plan accordingly. However, things happen. And I like how you said, you know, this way there's no excuses. We are here to just provide service and to make sure everyone gets home safely. And yes. um, to go more into how much it costs, I know once you do get a DUI, you usually have to get things installed into your car and, you know, attorney fees. So, you know, could you explain the cost for all of those as well? Yes, of course. So, you know, a lot of times people will end up hiring an attorney because, of course, they're, you know, fighting um, the DUI. They, they don't want this on their record. Um, so the average cost, um, I would say it's around $5,000 just to hire an attorney. And um, then there is that um, ignition interlock, also known as the car breathalyzer. 
And so then the person would be ordered to install that into their car, uh, taking their own time, right, out of their schedule and all out of pocket for the cost because, you know, people still need to get to work. And I know this because, you know, of course, many people have friends or family um, that has experienced um, having a DUI. And so through that process and, and other people sharing, this is how I know about what they had to go through and the cost of, um, you know, the attorney, the, the car breathalyzer, and all of that, just time, taking the time out to go to court, um, and just missing missing work, um, the jail time, all of that, you know, um, the the time all adds up to, you know, loss of money, loss of income, um, the, wh whatever the money that is being dished out for the cost, right, of something that could have been prevented. Yes, yes. Exactly. <clears throat> and what, you know, going out with friends, having a few drinks, it, it is always such a good time. I love going out. But, you know, to plan ahead, because in one split second, like you said, you don't want to be spending $5,000 in lawyer fees or, you know, having that on your shoulders. So, you know, with Safe Ride Hawaii, and like you shared, it's great that you are making sure that there are no excuses anymore. So, you know, besides what it costs for getting a DUI, what about the costs for the victims and the costs for the families who has lost a loved one? Uh, well, I mean, of course, if it's um, a person who was just injured, um, again, for that person, there's, you know, time away from work if they're at that age that they're working. So it's loss of income, uh, hospital bills, and, you know, recovery. It's, it's a lot of expenses that a person can incur. And if it's someone like us, if it's a family like us who actually have lost a loved one, um, you know, when you talk about the um, celebration of life and all of that, that comes immediately after the death of a loved one, um, it's it's costly, you know, and it's not just about the financial part. Um, it's the cost of the whole entire, you know, strain on the family and, you know, emotionally and mentally um, just, I'm lost for words right now. Yes, you know, and I, I think a lot of times we hear through the news or social media about a DUI incident, but it never um, has follow-up stories of how much it will cost, you know, um, for the aftermath. And the reason why I was asking about, you know, the cost for the victims and the cost for um, people who have lost their loved ones is because when someone does pass away so suddenly and so tragically, um, did we did we have that time to prepare or you know did you have the funds saved up and it's it's very very expensive and i know um you know if you don't mind sharing through your experience just within you know when Sally had passed how much money did you have to spend right away because it was so sudden that we just had to you know we had to pay uh, it was a lot upfront because of the, you know, um, the funeral service um, and everything else that came after, you know, getting the niche and um, all of that. There is a lot of upfront costs because I mean, we're not going to wait um, for, you know, in insurance payout and things like that. Um, unless you have some kind of final expense plan that pays out within 48 to 72 hours. Um, if a person doesn't have that type of plan, um, a regular type of life insurance um, could take months to pay out. So, of course, you know, people don't expect 
to lose a child and, you know, having um, that set aside with, with that in mind that um, something will happen to, you know, a young, healthy individual. Yes. And I think what you just shared too, of planning ahead and planning ahead in all aspects, not just going out for, you know, a drink and finding a ride, but planning ahead financially as well of the what ifs. And it's, it's really not the most attractive topic that people like to talk about, right? No one wants to talk about a loved one passing or even death in general. However, it is a very important topic because it's also inevitable. And the sooner I feel that, you know, you plan ahead, the sooner you have to have that financial stress and worries. Yes. And if we can talk more about the, um, the slides that I have. So we can bring up the next one. And so, you know, through, again, through the tragedy, um, we just want to do work out there that's helping to prevent other families from having to go through what we have gone through, Shana. And out there spreading the word, there's many events that had reached out to us. Um, such as Aloha by Volume and um, a huge event with the Kailua Fall Festival. I want to say there were probably over 12,000 people there. So it's just us getting the word out that this service is there for people. And, you know, again, just raising awareness um, and letting people know that there are options. Yes. And I know we have more sides too of you getting out there and not only sharing at events and, you know, being of service at events that we get invited to, but also the education aspect and bringing awareness to um, driver's education classes. Mm -hmm. Could you share more about that too? Yes. Uh, so there's um, Wang Wei driving and um, he was very generous in offering to support Safe Ride Hawaii and having us go in to his program and do the um, the DUI portion of his curriculum. So there's Umpai Champathong, my other half. He and I went in and taught that portion of um, the curriculum for the driver's ed. So these are um, high school students. It was actually a very huge, huge class. I want to say there were probably about 70 students. And um, I know that because it's a personal story, it really touched the students there. I could tell that, you know, they were affected by it. Um, I actually met a mother whose daughter was in the class and went back to tell her the story. And, you know, of course, she said she knew about it because we know each other. So she pers personally knows our story as well. So, you know, when we're able to to share, especially with young adults and teens, I really feel that um, it's already educating them, raising awareness, um, letting them know that, hey, you know, even your mom knows somebody that this happened to, you know, and of course she doesn't want this happening to her own daughter. So the driver's ed is a great way to, you know, get our children educated about um, just the effects of what can happen when we are not taking responsibility and learning how to take responsibility at a young age. Yes. And I'm so glad you were out there and spreading, you know, Azalea's story and how it could be preventable because we do learn about these things. I took driver's ed as well, and it does make a difference about hearing a personal story. So, you know, I hope in the future you're able to go to more schools and hopefully go back to long way driving. But yeah. um, we are still going to be part of his curriculum, which I'm very grateful for. And yeah, you know, honestly, I feel that it shouldn't just be with people that are under the age of 18. And um, 
if they want to get their their driver's license, right? I feel that it should be for all ages, for every person who's going to get their driver's license. I truly feel that, you know, that investment in driver's ed, which I believe it's only um, under 600. I know it's maybe about $550 for the course. And I feel that it, it should be mandatory for everyone to take driver's ed before getting a driver's license. So the person that killed Azalea was only 21 years old himself. And, you know, I, I'm not sure maybe he didn't have the education or perhaps just didn't care. You know, I'm not sure, but I just feel like if this could get to everyone before they drive so that they they can understand and be more responsible. Yes. Yes. I agree with you 100%. And um, I know you do have more uh, slides, though, and I really would love for you to, you know, share more about you getting out there in the community and how, how in other ways that you're educating others, not only in driver's ed, but in all other places. Well, we had um, a sign waving just um, five days after Zaley was pronounced dead. And so this was in 2020, the day after Christmas, we did a sign waving and we decided to do one every year. So we did it in 2021 and 2022 as well. So the last one that we had, um, uh, December of 2022, we had the state uh, Hawaii State Senator Brandon Elefante come out and join us. So, you know, it was an honor to have him there. Uh, along with uh, many family, friends, uh, even strangers, uh, supporters that came out to help us because, you know, we're really in this together as a community. It's not just about me and what happened with us and Azalea. It's so many more families out there that this has happened to. And even if it hasn't, it's something that could happen to many more families that we want to work together to be able to prevent other families from suffering the way that we have. So, um, you know, that that's what we're out there doing. And we even went to have a visit with um, the mayor, Rick Blangiardi. Uh, we did that the day after Thanksgiving last year. And just seeing how, you know, we can work together to really get Safe Ride Hawaii out there to provide the service for every single person that needs it and for them to, you know, be aware and um, just know the options that are out there for them, that they know that no matter what, even if they drove, you know, even if they didn't plan ahead, there are options out there that every single person can get home safe. Yes. And, you know, thank you for sharing that. And, you know, I'm, it's amazing how, how you get out there. And like, even after Azalea had passed, you know, your mission was to just solely spread awareness of what's going on and how this is 100% preventable. And even after Thanksgiving, it really doesn't matter what occasion it is. I feel like this should be something that's talked about. It's a normal thing. And, you know, with that said, I know we had an event this past Saturday and I would, um, you know, love for you to get into it and share about what we did and the outcome of it and our why. Yeah, so we had our first fundraising event of this kind, and it was with Chef Eric Pasquale from San Francisco, along with Lanai, who is a Emmy Award winner for his uh, Cooking Hawaiian Style show. And they collaborated, had a sit-down dinner, six course, and telling the story about the migration to Hawaii. So all the different ethnicities here and we had about 70 participants attending the dinner um, many many volunteers um, 
I, I want to say maybe about 30 volunteers. So it was just an amazing event. Um, but with that all done and, and over, we still have our silent auction, which uh, will stay open online for a few more days. So if there's anyone else out there that wants to support, you can go to our website, saferidehawaii.org. And our silent auction link is on our website. So saferidehawaii.org. And when we, you know, we talk about this being in this together, that was the name of our event. And we really are. Again, it's not it's beyond us and Azalea and what happened to our family. It's about everyone. It's about the community. And just imagine a world without drunk driving. Our country would save $132 billion in costs each year. Wow. You know, and I don't know if everyone can wrap their head around that number, because when you say 132, it sounds small and many people can't even wrap their head around billion. Right. But 132 billion of costs each year. And that's what we would save if we live in a world without drunk driving. Yes. And with with the event that you we had this past weekend, it was incredible. And just to see people enjoying themselves and having a great time and knowing that they're all going to get home safe. So, you know, I think the purpose, too, of this conversation that we're having is, is to say it's okay to drink. You know, it's okay to drink. A lot of people do it. It's it's fine, but just drink responsibly and have a plan. And with this past event that we had, I seen everyone having the time of their lives. And, you know, on our end, I was so happy to see that they all got home safely because they planned ahead. So I think, you know, moving forward, that's the conversation and that's what we really want to express to everyone, just drink responsibly. Yes. Um, I called every person that was attending the event to make sure that they had a DD or they had, um, you know, carpooling, had a DD or going to Uber. And if not, I told them a safe ride is going to be provided for you, not do you want one? Because I said, no one, absolutely no one is drinking and driving from this event. So if all event planners could do that, it would make a huge difference. Yes. Yes. And we are here for that service and we are here to just change the world and change, you know, the fatalities of what's going on. But, you know, thank you so much for being on the show, mom. I'm wow, really grateful you. for your time and you sharing your story and Azalea's story and our journey. I feel like this was such an important topic um, to have. Thank you. Thank you. Hope to see you all at the next episode of Money Talks. I'm Shana Park, your host, a Gen Z inspiring lives of liberties. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please click the like and subscribe button on YouTube. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Check out our website, thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.